She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. This year, for Black History Month, the city of Boston's Office of Racial Justice carried around a blank canvas to every event that they held in the city. Uh, I have the chance to be surrounded by Black excellence, Black joy, Black brilliance, Black resistance every single day here working for the city of Boston. They called it the Intention Board. So when I make an intention, I always make sure that I follow through that until it comes into fruition. Anything you manifest, it comes into reality. Now self-affirmations, <clears throat> I'll say a few. I'm present, I'm here, I am alive, I am breathing, I am beautiful, I am creative. At each event, everyone was invited to write down a personal affirmation or positive intention. Ultimately, creating one final masterpiece that will live forever. Uh, intentions and affirmations are almost the hope that allow me to continue to navigate in a world that doesn't tell me to have faith in myself, believe in myself, love myself, um, love the people that I am a part of, the diaspora that I represent. It's really hard in a world where I think people don't say, I'm proud of you, or I'm so happy for you. Anything that we think we can come into reality and actually actualize it into real time. So be careful with how we speak, how we think, how we talk to our inner selves, because spirit's always going to tell us, okay? And this is the hard thing, but I challenge you all to it. It's important as people that we understand the power of our words, the power of our thoughts, the power of our dreams. Once upon a time, they wouldn't even let us read or speak if it was considered out of turn. We also need to be cognizant and mindful. And when we say this word grace, what does grace mean? Meaning that I don't look like what I'm going through. And maybe if I was wearing it on the outside, you would treat me with grace. You wonder how do you socialize young people in order to deal with the hatred and the heinous vitriol of racism and prejudice? You don't run from it. You teach them about it. But here's the thing, we all know that we're not, we're not even close to what racial equity looks like. Make them hear you, make them hear you. How justice was our battle and how justice was denied. Make them hear you, make them hear you. And say to those who blame us for the way we chose to fight. That sometimes there are battles that are more than black and white. And I could not put down my sword when justice was my right. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. Tell 
a story to your daughters and your sons. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. And tell them in our struggle we were not the only ones. Make them hear you. Make them hear you. Your sword can be a sermon or the power of the pen. Teach every child to raise his voice and then my brother then. Will justice be demanded by ten million righteous men? Make them hear you. When they hear you, I'll be near you. Oh, yeah. Black history, what is that? We are the best contributors, that we've changed the world, that the African American has paved the way, that hip hop has done it, that our culture have done it, that our beauty has done it. And then here we are, me, a black Muslim immigrant African woman, that I'm able to be here because of you, sis, because of you, brother. <laughs> to recognize the contributions of the ancestors, the places where we have fought and we have struggled and we have made progress. But our resistance must remain until we get to the place that our city, our country, and our world looks like it should in terms of justice. You can't make a history like that. And we are counting on you and your generation to move that forward. My blackness is not just the pigmentation of brown coloring, but it's the representation of every black sister and brother that has fought for all the other black sisters and brothers that have to live in a world of a system of racism and discrimination. My blackness represents the wounds that have to constantly be reopened when you hear another traumatizing story about a black man, woman, or child that got killed, brutally attacked by a racist cop. My blackness is vigor. I am constantly reminded of how powerful I am by every black-owned business becoming successful when they say we can't, but we do. They say we won't be anything, but I promise you we are. My blackness is the voice I had inside of me because they chained our people and we were left with no voice. Suffered in silence, but yet with the loudest cry, and here we are, facing the same stem of systemic racism. My blackness is survival. I am a young black girl surviving this world with the portrayed vision that black people are immoral. My blackness is having a dream and chasing those dreams and finally seeing those dreams in reality because ain't that what MLK said? My blackness is old Negro spirituals to create, to reconnect with my ancestors, African incense, white sage, rituals, prayer, connected with my gods and goddesses. My blackness is culture, my heritage, bongos, drums, and rattles. My blackness is the trails of steps to success and freedom through trial and tribulation. My blackness is proven every point wrong and depicted in visions of black people, so no. My blackness is not just the pigmentation of brown coloring, but let me tell you, it's an infinite abundance of power. and to have the chance to try to use the platform and the moment that we have now to take real stock in ways that this structure and this building hasn't always and, are, and still has much work to do in acknowledging our role 
in deepening disparities in our city, in setting up systems that haven't seen everyone, don't work for everyone. And that can feel really heavy, that there's decades, centuries, and we as individuals in this moment, it can, it can feel daunting how much is in front of us to do. And you know what? That's what government is about. It's about listening and hearing and making sure that this building feels safe to have these conversations. We look to build a Boston that is not just looking ahead, charging forward as urgently as we can, but also addressing where we've been, acknowledging and being real about our role in that as well. When the tough get going, the going get tough. Must and I have met my mama. The scars she bears are invisible. Only those with the third eye could see you see her body is strong, agile, but weakened by her experiences. Black women are to only be strong, no complaints, no check-ins, only checkups to ensure the body is intact. Heavy the head who wears the crown, but I see it slipping. Weight on her shoulder, she carries worlds around. We simply orbit in her universe, even when she's lost in her own space. But who, who will carry her burdens? I mean, her anger, her depression, her anxiety, her bipolar, her wallet. She don't need no partner, but society's price tags tells her different stories, fairy tales unbeknownst to her for. She's a dollar in a dream mentality. Don't worry, I got this swag. I can do bad all by myself. No two cents to rub together, but she rubbed out meals. Who will nourish her soul? It's tired, been beaten, but not just by life, by family and society who cast her away, didn't want to help her rewrite her wrongs, running away from generational trauma. She's out of breath. Panic attacks her nervous system. Like a baby she births, she so soothes, resilient. Black and brown women overcome so many obstacles. And when asked, how are you? They reply, my mama replies. I reply, I'm fine. Resilience. I am powerful. I am healed. I am healing. I am present. I am love. Because at the end of the day, it's all about love. And what happens when we have the courage to love one another?